and a hearty good day or good evening to wherever and whenever you are watching. I'd like to welcome you to another episode of my program, Going Overboard. Today is another Kita Wood Dye demonstration on cedar wood, and I'll be making a Batman themed aggravation board for my wife. A little more on that later. I mix my dye with isopropyl alcohol. It makes it really easy to blend and it evaporates quick too, which is nice. Um, I'm going to put a, a couple coats on here to get it nice and dark and I'm intentionally not blending it too carefully. I want it to be a little streaky. Uh, while I'm not going to be putting clouds in this, I want to give the feel of a stormy dark sky. Uh, I figured that was fitting for a Batman theme board. I do have another video that I recorded as a Bob Ross parody and I use more colorful dyes in that one in making a sunset. So if you want to check that one out, feel free. That'll give you a little better idea of what you can do with the different colors of the wood dye. But it's nice too because you can really formulate your colors, even making slight variations so you can get a, a real nice smooth transition. It's a lot of fun. I'm really falling in love with the wood dye. And once the dye thoroughly dries, which won't take long, I am going to put two or three coats of sealer using that. It's a water-based polyurethane by Verithane that works fantastic. And that's going to help prevent the capillary action which can make it very difficult to make clean stencils. Capillary action is defined as the ascension of liquids through a slim tube, cylinder, or permeable substance due to adhesive and cohesive forces interacting between the liquid and the surface. Okay, there's the uh, scientific definition, but basically Oh, it's like a sponge effect, right? You have liquid on the counter, you put a sponge on there, you just set it there, and it absorbs, because it's so porous, it absorbs the liquid. And a similar thing happens if you're stenciling on dry wood. Wood is very porous, some more than others. And so if there's no barrier, uh, those pores will want to draw the liquid in so you put your stencil down, you paint it, you gob on the paint maybe, and the wood's going to absorb it. And some of that is going to be absorbed underneath the lines of the stencil. And then when you remove your stencil, your lines are blurred and you're frustrated and it's difficult to fix. However, with what I've done here by sealing the wood, it's filled in those pores. And so that's going to really help make very clean lines in your stencils and you'll see later in this video when I um, peel back my stencils you'll see just how crisp it turned out. I was very pleased with it. Uh, it it's, it's similar too with the contact paper that I have laid down for painting the marble holes because it's sealed and I have the contact paper um, it works for nice clean edges in the marble holes. In here you'll see as I'm cutting out my sides I'm using some blue tape. Uh, something I learned a few weeks ago is that it really helps prevent chip out. I was having a problem with it and actually ruined a couple boards because the chip outs were more than a quarter of an inch so it was greater than what my router bit would take out and so the only way to fix it was to use putty and re-dye it and it was not working. Uh, so the blue tape I tried and it works fantastic. You'll see here it reveals a nice sharp edge. There's a little bit of chip out but the router bit is going to take care of all of it. So as you can see it came out nice and clean. Uh, you could probably just leave it as is in this instance, but I like to run an edge detail using my router. I feel it just adds that real nice finishing touch. And 
And now, for the fun part of the stenciling. You'll see me just apply one coat in these instances here, in this demo, but I've actually applied three coats, three light coats, because it's better to apply a few light coats, let them dry, instead of one heavy coat, which even with the steps I've taken, if you put too much down, there's still a chance it's going to bleed under the stencil. This part was a lot of fun. Uh, something I learned just tearing off a piece of a sponge and I dipped it in just some gray acrylic paint and blotted off the excess off screen and came back and, and just kept blotting it in. Kept using the Bob Ross tapping technique and it really came out good. I was surprised. I didn't really have much practice doing this and uh, sort of just went for it and <laughs> was very thankful that it worked. This part was really fun. I had to kind of hold my Superman stencil up to gauge where I wanted to put my first coat of paint because this was going to be the red uh, emblem on the silhouette as you can see there so I had to make sure I I didn't make it too big uh, but that came out well and that really will show off a feature of using the stencils that you can make with uh, I have a Cricut Maker 3 I love that thing uh, when I peel this back later you'll you'll see why um, and you'll see here just how crisp the lines are of the moon first of all and then as I peel back these two stencils, um, just take a look at what you can do properly preparing the surface and using these vinyl stencils with the Cricut. And I said I'd get back to this uh, later. That's a picture of my lovely wife, June, and her prized Batman mug. Which, uh, yeah, there it is now after I, after I broke it. It was an accident, but uh, this board is a sort of a little bit of a redemption for me. Anyway, I want to take this opportunity to thank you so much for watching, and hopefully it was helpful to you. And if you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. And uh, we'll talk to you next time. Enjoy the reveal.